In this video, we are going to discuss problems which are based on epsilon delta definition. Now, epsilon delta definition problems are usually very difficult for students. So, I will try to give some basics that are needed before you start up with the problems. The definition that uh, of limit using epsilon delta and the definition of continuity using epsilon delta is already done in my previous video. So, you can go through that carefully. So, what basically this definition, when I am using this definition to solve problems, okay, what you are going to remember here, we will note down some important things. So, first thing is that epsilon and delta are two positive numbers out of which epsilon is given to us. So, remember this that given epsilon positive. Then you have to find the delta. You have to find delta. Once you find delta, your problem is over. So you just have to, in this video, I will try to explain how to find that delta smartly. Right? Such that the, the definition of limit, we know that 0 less than square root of x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square less than delta is implying that f of x, y minus l that becomes less than epsilon. Once I am able to do this, then I can say that limit of f of x, y is equal to how much? Is equal to L as x comma y, x y tends to a comma b. Okay, this definition is carefully discussed in the previous video. You can go through it. Now we have to use second fact that you have to remember when you solve this problem is that we know that x square is always less than x square plus something, right? So x square is less than x square plus something I'm adding y square, which is a non-negative number. So x square will always be less than or equal to, let, because y can become 0. So x square is less than or equal to x square plus y square. And I take square root on both the sides. And I take square root on both the sides, the positive square roots, this will become square root of x square is less than or equal to what? Square root of x square plus y square. And what is positive square root of x square? This mod x. So mod of x is less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square. This inequality is very important for us by solving the problem. Right. So that is first inequality which is square root of x is always less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square. But I can replace x by y wherever there is x I will just write y square is less than x square plus y square. And similarly when I take the square roots what inequality I will get? I will get mod y is also less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square. This, these two things will help us solve the problems of epsilon and delta. And third important thing is we know that modulus of sine of x is always less than or equal to 1. Modulus of cos of x that is also less than or equal to 1. These three things if you know carefully, if you, if you remember very properly that epsilon will be given, I will be able to find delta. Once I find delta, my answer is over. Second, mod of x is less than or equal to this, mod of y is less than or equal to this. And mod sin x and mod cos x are always less than or equal to 1. So these three things combined will help us solving the problems. Let us see the first problem now. So using epsilon delta, now I want to prove that this limit xy tending to 0, 0, xy upon square root of x plus y square is equal to how much? Is equal to 0. So now I have to prove it using epsilon delta. Remember, you are not asked to evaluate, okay? Otherwise, students solve this by saying x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sin theta, done in the previous video, and they say that the answer is 0. No, that is evaluation of limit. Now, what are we trying to do in this part? We are trying to prove it using epsilon delta, okay? So, what is our standard thing? So, epsilon is given to us. So, let epsilon positive be given right and i want to find what i want to find delta okay such that what should happen such that zero is less than square root of x minus a whole square means it is x minus zero whole square means square root of x square plus y minus zero the whole square you remember the definition x minus a whole square y minus b whole square that is less than delta should imply, should give you that mod of f of xy. Who is f of xy? This is f of xy. xy upon square root of x square plus y square 
this f of x y minus l who is the limit l is zero it is given to us minus zero should be less than how much should be less than so i want to find a delta from this thing and what is given to me this epsilon is given to me i have to want to find a suitable delta so that this inequality or this implication will hold okay now let us try to write it in a simpler version so this means that square zero less than square root of x square plus y square less than delta is implying mod of x y upon square root of x square plus y square is modulus is less than what is less than epsilon so this should imply this okay so this should imply this means what it is given to us that this thing is correct it is given to us that this thing is correct i want to show that this thing is also correct in that case and in this process i have to find the value of delta right so i will start with this particular thing mod of xy upon square root xy by square less than epsilon we will try to bring it as less than epsilon okay so see what i will do so i'll say consider mod of xy upon square root of x square plus y square okay finally i know that it has to be less than what it has to be less than epsilon right so what do I, what do i know about this thing now so i can say that it is mod x into mod y upon square root of i don't need a modulus to that because it's already positive x square plus y square okay so i'm i've reached here and now i'm stuck what to do next but in the in the previous prerequisites that i told you what was the important second inequality you remember that mod of x is always less than or equal to what square root of x square plus y square and mod of y is also less than square root of x square plus y square so this is less than or equal to what the denominator i'm going to keep same and what do i know about mod x i know that mod x is less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square multiplied by mod y is also less than or equal to square root of x square plus y. so for mod y also i will write and then i understand that one of this gets cancelled and i'm just getting it equal to how much square root of how much x square plus y square do i know something about square root of x square plus y square i know that it is less than how much it is less than delta so this is less than what this is less than delta but already i know that this modulus should be always less than how much it should be less than epsilon and when i did the left hand side when i started with the left hand side and when i simplified it i came that this modulus is less than delta so i know this x minus x y upon square root x x plus y square is less than epsilon i know this and when i derive it i'm getting it is less than delta so what can you say about this delta and epsilon right so first thing is telling you that it is less than epsilon second thing is telling you that it is less than delta so what must be the answer of delta so what must be delta so remember you have to find delta so that delta must be nothing but equal to epsilon this is how i get the value of delta you can in fact even choose the value of delta which is smaller than epsilon no problem right if you ask me the exact value of delta i will say that choose delta is equal to epsilon i hope now this finding the value of delta is clear from this problem let us try one more problem so it will be more clear so now let us solve this problem using epsilon delta definition now it is slightly tricky but it is very easy once you understand the concept so let us try to evaluate so let epsilon positive be given and i want to find what i want to find the delta as usual such that zero less than square root of x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square will become x square plus y square because a and b are zero this should be less than delta and that should imply that modulus of f of x minus l l is zero limit is zero here so y plus x sin of 1 by y minus zero this should be what this should be less than 
epsilon means I want that square root of 0 less than square root of x square plus y square less than delta should imply that modulus of y plus x sine of 1 by y this modulus minus 0 is out now and this modulus should be what should be less than epsilon so what will I do in this again this thing is this inequality is given to me I will start with this inequality and try to simplify the left hand side of that so I will say consider what is the left hand side mod of y plus x sine of 1 by y okay I will just write this and I will try to simplify this okay this inequality this is a plus b modulus which is less than or equal to mod a plus mod b so it is less than or equal to mod of y plus mod of x sine 1 upon y correct which is this mod of x into sine of 1 upon y is mod of x into mod of sine upon of y is equal to mod of y into plus mod of x into mod of sine 1 upon y correct now we know that in the preliminaries we have written mod of sine of anything I have written in the preliminary that mod of sin x is always less than or equal to 1. So this x can be anything. So who is playing the role of x here? It's like mod of sin y. And what do we know about now mod of sin sin of 1 by y? We know that mod of sin theta is always than or equal to 1. So this I can now replace by what? Less than or equal to. Everything remains as it is. Mod y remains as it is. Mod x remains as it is. And this becomes less than or equal to multiplied by how much? Less than or equal to 1. Right? Because mod of sin of 1 upon y is less than or equal to 1. Right? So this is mod of y plus mod of x multiplied by 1. So that is multiplied by x or mod x. So this is mod of y plus mod x. So I have reached here and now I am stuck. Now what do I know? Again in the preliminaries we have written that mod of x is always less than or equal to what? square root of x square plus y square. So I will use here mod of x is also square root less than or equal to x square root of x square plus y square and mod of y is also less than square root of x square plus y square. So mod of y is less than or equal to square root x square plus y square plus mod of x is also less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square and this becomes 2 times square root of x square plus y square and finally I have come to the stage that what do I know about square root of x square plus y square? I know that square root of x square plus y square is less than what? Less than delta. So this becomes less than, strictly less than. See here there is strictly less than. Okay? Strictly less than 2 times delta. Right? So I have reached here. And so now what I have done? So this quantity is less than epsilon. When I simplified the left hand side quantity, I got that it is less than 2 delta. So the comparison between to delta and epsilon again the same story as in the first problem this is given to be less than epsilon when I simplified it it came to be less than 2 delta so what can I say about 2 delta and epsilon they must be the same therefore 2 delta must be equal to how much must be equal to epsilon so what is the value of delta that I am going to get in this problem the value of delta will be equal to epsilon by 2 once I am able to find the value of delta it means that this limit is equal to 0 is proved. That is what is our definition telling us. If you give an epsilon and if you are able to find an delta, your work is done. Means this limit is equal to 0 is proved. Let us look at this problem now. So limit xy sine of 1 upon x square plus y square is equal to 0. This limit I have to prove that it is equal to 0 using epsilon delta definition. So let me say given an epsilon positive. So given epsilon positive I want to find delta positive such that 0 less than square root of x square plus y square because it is 0 0 a b 0 0 less than delta should be implying mod of f of x y which is mod of x y sine of 1 upon x square plus y square minus 0 f of x y minus l should be less than epsilon right so this basically means that 0 less than square root of x square plus y square 
less than delta should give me that mod of x y sine of one upon x square plus y square should be less than epsilon. This is what I have to show, right? This implies this. So I will say start with the left hand side, which is mod of x y sine one upon x square plus y square and this is equal to modulus of this into modulus of this into modulus of this no problem mod of x into mod of y into mod of sine of something which is 1 upon x square plus y square correct but we know from the preliminaries that mod of sine of theta anything we hear it is always less than or equal to 1 so this will become less than or equal to mod of x as it is, mod of y also as it is, and this is just 1. So it is just less than or equal to, this entire thing is just less than or equal to mod x into mod y, right? So I will erase that one now. But I know that mod of x is what? Mod of x is always less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square. Mod of y is also less than or equal to square root of x plus y square. So this is equal less than or equal to square root of x square plus y square multiplied by the same thing square root of x square plus y square right so it is less than what but i know square root of x square plus y square is less than delta so this is less than delta and this is also multiplied by delta so i have that this is nothing but less than delta square so this quantity mod of x y sine of something is less than delta square and when i simplified it got, i think i got delta square earlier this is, uh, is saying that mod of x y sine of x 1 upon x y plus y square should be less than epsilon. So what must be the comparison between these two? But the left hand side is the same. So right hand sides have to be what? So this means that delta square should be actually be treated as what? Can you write it? Uh, take it as epsilon. So what value of delta you are going to choose here? You are going to choose the value of delta in this problem will be equal to square root of epsilon. And once I have found out the value of delta, I have proved that this limit is equal to this. Now we will see the next problem in which the limit L is not equal to 0. All the previous problems had the limit equal to 0. So this part always became 0. Now in the next problem we will see that this part is not 0. So here there is something will be there. And then I will, how will I handle that kind of limit? That is the next problem. So now this is a very simple problem. Limit xy tending to 1 comma 2, x plus 3y is equal to 7. Right. So if you will have x equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, obviously 1 plus 3 into 2 will equal to 7. So the limit is correct. Now let us see how we will prove it using the epsilon delta definition. Right. So I will say let epsilon positive be given and I want to find delta positive. So 0 less than square root of, now you have to be careful, x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square this should be less than delta should imply what mod of f of x y which is x plus 3 y minus l l is 7 f of x y minus l this modulus should be less than what this should be less than epsilon okay this is what i have to do i have to do, i have to work with this calculation now now here what we have to be do first before proceeding with the left hand side and as in the previous sum, you have to make some calculations here. Okay. So you know that mod of, if I take x minus 1 square, it will be always less than or equal to what? x minus 1 square plus something. What is that something? y minus 2 square. Right. So when I take the square root on both the sides, this will become less than delta because it is x minus 1 whole square less than delta. And what is square root of x minus 1 whole square? It is mod of x minus 1. So the meaning of the left hand side is directly telling me that mod of x minus 1, this is mod of x minus 1, less than, it is less than what? It is less than delta. And similarly, what can I say about y minus 2? If I replace this x minus 1 by y minus 2, same thing, right? y minus 2 square is also less than d square plus d square but this is less than delta. So what is the square root of y minus 2 whole square? Mod of y minus 2. So this 
left hand side also tells me that mod y minus 2 is also less than delta and this is implying what this is implying x plus 3y minus 7 is less than epsilon okay now let us start with our usual calculation right so i will say consider the left hand side so consider lhs so what is lhs mod x plus 3y less minus 7 I already know it is less than epsilon. I will simplify this and find up in terms of delta. Okay, and then I will compare the two things. So which is equal to now here I have x plus 3y minus 7. What can I simplify here? I will just try to bring x minus 1 and y minus 2 in the picture. Okay, because I know something about x minus 1, I know something about y minus 2. How will I bring x minus 1 and y minus 2? It is very simple. This 7, this 7 can be written as what? This 7 can be written as in the format of x plus 3, right? It is 1 plus 3 into 2, right? x is 1, y is 2. So it is 1 plus 3 into 2, right? So this is equal to mod of x minus 1 plus 3 times y minus 2. Because I have taken 3 common. So I've got x minus 1 plus 3 times y minus 2. Everything is inside the modulus. So I have two terms here. First term is x minus 1. Second term is 3 into y minus 2. See, I brought x minus 1 and y minus 2 smartly by looking at this, the question itself. So which is less than or equal to what? This is modulus of something plus something. So by triangle inequality, what is modulus of a plus b? It is less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b. So it is less than equal to modulus of x minus 1 plus modulus of 3 into y minus 2, right? This is which inequality I have used here, triangle inequality. Modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b, which is now I know something about x minus 1. What is not mod of x minus 1? I know it is less than delta. See, I have to bring it in terms of delta. This is less than delta plus this 3 will come outside the modulus 3 times. What is modulus of y minus 2? Again, modulus of y minus 2 is less than delta. So this 3 delta here and this delta plus 3 delta will become 4 delta. So when I take the left hand side, I got it that. So what is my observation? My observation is that, that f of x plus 3y minus 7 from the above calculation, it is coming to be less than how much? It is coming to be see, less than sign is here. It is coming less than equal to how much? 4 delta. In, and what do I know? I already know that x plus 3y is less than minus 7 is less than epsilon. So if you compare this statement and this statement, what can you say? What can you say about, the, about epsilon and delta? I can surely say that this 4 delta can be chosen to be equal to how much? Chosen to be epsilon. And therefore, the value of delta in this problem comes out to be how much? It is equal to epsilon by 4. This is how this problem is completed. I hope now all the problems, these four problems of epsilon delta are clear and how to use epsilon delta definition to prove the limits is now completely clear. Now you can try many such problems with the same logic.